The history of Pennsylvania as a political entity began in 1681 when William Penn received a royal charter from King Charles II of England, but human activity in the region precedes that date. Before Pennsylvania was settled by Europeans, the area was home to the Lenape, Sioux Squahannock, Iroquois, Erie, Shawnee and other Native American tribes. Most of these tribes were driven off or reduced to remnants as a result of new diseases such as smallpox that arrived long before any permanent colonists. Pennsylvania was first colonized by Swedish and Dutch settlers in the 17th century, before the English took control of the colony in 1667. In 1681, William Penn established a colony based on religious tolerance. It and its chief city, Philadelphia, was settled by many Quakers. In the mid-18th century, the colony attracted many German and Scots-Irish immigrants. Pennsylvania played a central role in the American Revolution, and Philadelphia served as the nation's capital for much of the 19th century. Starting in the 18th century and continuing into the 20th century, Pennsylvania was the second most populous state in the country, and Philadelphia was the second most populous city in the nation. Pennsylvania also expanded its borders into what is now known as northwestern, northeastern, and southwestern Pennsylvania, and Pittsburgh grew into one of America's largest and most prominent cities. During the Civil War, Pennsylvania played an important role in the Union's victory. After the war, Pennsylvania grew into a Republican stronghold and a major manufacturing and transportation center. After the Great Depression and World War II, Pennsylvania moved towards the service industry and became a swing state. Pre-Columbian era, Pennsylvania's history of human habitation extends to thousands of years before the foundation of the province of Pennsylvania. Archaeologists generally believe that the first settlement of the Americas occurred at least 15,000 years ago during the last glacial period, though it is unclear when humans first entered the area known as Pennsylvania. There is an open debate in the archaeological community regrading when the ancestors of Native Americans expanded across the two continents down to the tip of South America, with possibilities ranging between 30,000 and 10,500 years ago. The Meadowcroft Rock Shelter contains the earliest known signs of human activity in Pennsylvania, and perhaps all of North America, as it contains the remains of a civilization that existed over 10,000 years ago and possibly predated the Clovis culture by 1000 CE, in contrast to their nomadic hunter-gatherer ancestors. The native population of Pennsylvania had developed agricultural techniques and a mixed food economy. By the time that European colonization of the Americas began, several Native American tribes inhabited the region. The Lenape spoke an Algonquin language, and inhabited an area known as the Lenape Hooking, which consisted of southeastern Pennsylvania and parts of the surrounding states. The Shawnee also spoke an Algonquin language, and inhabited various parts of Pennsylvania. The Sioux Squahannock spoke an Iroquoian language and inhabited areas adjacent to the Sioux Squahanna River and its tributary rivers. The powerful Iroquois Confederacy was centered in New York, but also exerted influence in Pennsylvania and other areas in the eastern United States and Canada. Other tribes also lived in Pennsylvania, including the Aries, the Mohican, and the Conoy, like the other indigenous peoples of the Americas. The Native Americans of Pennsylvania suffered from a massive loss in population caused by disease following the beginning of the Columbian Exchange. In 1492, the Monongahela culture of southwestern Pennsylvania suffered such large losses that it was nearly extinct by the time Europeans arrived in the region in the 17th century. Early colonization Long-term European exploration of the Americas commenced after the 1492 expedition of Christopher Columbus, and the 1497 expedition of John Cabot is credited with discovering continental North America for Europeans. European exploration of the North America continued in the 16th century. 
and the area now known as Pennsylvania was mapped by the French and labeled Lacadia, or Wooded Coast. During Giovanni da Verrazzano's voyage in 1524, even before large-scale European settlement, the Native American tribes in Pennsylvania engaged in trade with Europeans, and the fur trade was a major motivation for the European colonization of North America. The fur trade also sparked wars among Native American tribes, including the Beaver Wars, which saw the Iroquois Confederacy rise in power. In the 17th century, the Dutch, Swedish, and British all competed for southeastern Pennsylvania, while the French expanded into parts of western Pennsylvania. In 1638, the Kingdom of Sweden, then one of the great powers in Europe, established the colony of New Sweden in the area of the present-day Mid-Atlantic states. The colony was established by Peter Manuet, the former governor of New Netherland, who established the fur trading colony over the objections of the Dutch. New Sweden extended into modern-day Pennsylvania, and was centered on the Delaware River with the capital at Fort Christina. In 1643, New Sweden Governor Johann Bjornsson Prince established Fort N.Y.A. Gothenburg, the first European settlement in Pennsylvania, on Tinicum Island. Prince also built his own home, the Prince Hof, on the island. In 1609, the Dutch Republic, in the midst of the Dutch Golden Age, commissioned Henry Hudson to explore North America. Shortly thereafter, the Dutch established the colony of New Netherland to profit from the North American fur trade. In 1655, during the Second Northern War, the Dutch under Peter Stuyvesant captured the New Sweden. Though Sweden never again controlled land in the area, several Swedish and Finnish colonists remained, and with their influence came America's first log cabins. The Kingdom of England had established the colony of Virginia in 1607 and the adjacent colony of Maryland in 1632. England also claimed the Delaware River watershed based on the explorations of John Cabot, John Smith, and Francis Drake. The English named the Delaware River for Thomas West, 3rd Baron de la War, the governor of Virginia from 1610 until 1618. During the Second Anglo-Dutch War, the English took control of the Dutch holdings in North America. At the end of the Third Anglo-Dutch War, the 1674 Treaty of Westminster permanently confirmed England's control of the region. Following the voyages of Giovanni da Verrazzano and Jacques Cartier, the French established a permanent colony in New France in the 17th century to exploit the North American fur trade. During the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, the French expanded New France across present-day eastern Canada into the Great Lakes region, and colonized the areas around the Mississippi River as well. New France expanded into western Pennsylvania by the 18th century, as the French built Fort Duquesne to defend the Ohio River Valley. With the end of the Swedish and Dutch colonies, the French were the last rivals to the British for control of the region that would become Pennsylvania. France was often allied with Spain, the only other remaining European power with holdings in continental North America. Beginning in 1688 with King William's War, France and England engaged in a series of wars for dominance over Northern America. The wars continued until the end of the French and Indian War in 1763, when France lost New France, British colonial period. On March 4, 1681, Charles II of England granted the province of Pennsylvania to William Penn to settle a £16,000 debt the king owed to Penn's father. Penn founded a proprietary colony that provided a place of religious freedom for Quakers. Penn named the colony Pennsylvania after his family, Penn, and the Latin word for woods, Sylvania. Penn landed in North America in 1682 and founded the colonial capital, Philadelphia, that same year. In addition to English Quakers, Pennsylvania attracted several other ethnic and religious groups, many of whom were fleeing persecution and the religious wars.
Welsh Quakers settled a large tract of land north and west of Philadelphia, in what are now Montgomery, Chester, and Delaware counties. This area became known as the Welsh Tract, and many cities and towns were named for points in Wales. The colony's reputation of religious freedom and tolerance also attracted significant populations of German, Scots-Irish, Scottish, and French settlers. Many of the settlers worshipped a brand of Christianity disfavoured by the government of their homeland, Huguenots, Puritans, Catholics, and Calvinists all migrated to Pennsylvania. Other groups, including Anglicans and Jews, migrated to Pennsylvania, while Pennsylvania also had a significant African-American population by 1730. Additionally, several Native American tribes and settlers of Swedish and Dutch origin continued to live in the region. In order to give his new province access to the ocean, Penn had leased the proprietary rights of the King Charles II's brother, James, Duke of York to the three lower counties on the Delaware River. In Penn's frame of government of 1682, Penn established a combined assembly by providing for equal membership from each county and requiring legislation to have the assent of both the lower counties and the upper counties. The meeting place for the assembly alternated between Philadelphia and Newcastle. In 1704, after disagreements between the upper and lower counties, the lower counties began meeting in a separate assembly. Pennsylvania and Delaware continued to share the same royal governor until the American Revolutionary War, when both Pennsylvania and Delaware became states. Penn died in 1718, and was succeeded as proprietor of the colony by his sons. While Penn had won the respect of the Lenape for his honest dealing, Penn's sons and agents were less sensitive to Native American concerns. The 1737 walking purchase expanded the colony, but caused a decline in relations with the Lenape. Pennsylvania continued to expand and settle in the areas to the west until the Royal Proclamation of 1763, which forbade all settlers from settling on the western side of the Appalachian Mountains. Meanwhile, Philadelphia became an important port and trading center. The University of Pennsylvania was founded during this period and Benjamin Franklin established various other organizations such as the American Philosophical Society, the Union Fire Company, and the Pennsylvania Abolition Society. By the start of the American Revolution, Philadelphia was the largest city in British North America. The western portions of Pennsylvania were among disputed territory between the colonial British and French during the French and Indian War. The French had established numerous fortified sites in the Pennsylvania, including Fort Leboeuf, Fort Presque Isle, Fort Mako, and the pivotal Fort Duquesne, located near the present site of Pittsburgh. Many Indian tribes were allied with the French because of their long trading history in opposition to the expansion of the British colonies. The conflict began near the present site of Uniontown, Pennsylvania when a company of militia under the command of George Washington ambushed a French force at the Battle of Jumonville Glen in 1754. Washington retreated to Fort Necessity and surrendered to a larger French force at the Battle of Fort Necessity. In 1755, the British sent Braddock expedition to capture Fort Duquesne, but the expedition ended in failure after the British lost the Battle of the Monomahila near present-day Braddock, Pennsylvania. In 1758, the British sent the Forbes expedition to capture Fort Duquesne. The French won the Battle of Fort Duquesne, but after the battle, the outnumbered French force demolished Fort Duquesne and retreated from the area. Fighting in North America had mostly come to an end by 1760, but the war continued until the signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1763. Britain's victory in the war helped secure Pennsylvania's frontier, as the Ohio country came under formal British control. Though New France was no more, the French would deal their British rivals a major blow in the American Revolution by aiding the rebel cause. During the French and Indian War, Pennsylvania settlers experienced raids from Indian allies of the French. 
The settlers' pleas for military relief were stymied by a power struggle in Philadelphia between Governor Robert Morris and the Pennsylvania Assembly. Morris wanted to send military forces to the frontier, but the Assembly, whose leadership included Benjamin Franklin, refused to grant the funds unless Morris agreed to the taxation of the proprietary lands, the vast tract still owned by the Penn family and others. The dispute was finally settled, and military relief sent, when the owners of the proprietary lands sent £5,000 to the colonial government, on condition that it was considered a free gift and not a down payment on taxes. Shortly after the end of the French and Indian War, Native Americans attempted to drive the British out of Ohio country in Ponchik's Rebellion. The war, which began in 1763, saw heavy fighting in western Pennsylvania. Following the start of the rebellion, Native Americans in the region started the siege of Fort Pitt. The Native forces were defeated in the Battle of Bushy Run. The war lasted until 1766, when the British made peace with Pontiac. During the war, the British government passed the Proclamation Act. The act barred Americans from any settling west of the Appalachians, and reserved that territory for the Native Americans. Fighting between Native Americans and Americans in present-day Pennsylvania continued in Lord Dunmore's War and the Revolutionary War. Native American tribes ceased to pose a military threat to European settlers in Pennsylvania after the conclusion of the Northwest Indian War in 1795. American Revolution and Early Government Pennsylvania's residents generally supported the protests common to all 13 colonies after the proclamation of 1763 and the Stamp Act were passed, and Pennsylvania sent delegates to the Stamp Act Congress in 1765. Philadelphia hosted the First and Second Continental Congresses, the latter of which resulted in the adoption of the Declaration of Independence in Independence Hall in 1776. Pennsylvania was the site of several battles and military activities during the American Revolution, including George Washington's crossing of the Delaware River, the Battle of Brandywine, and the Battle of Germantown. During the Philadelphia Campaign, the rebel army of George Washington spent the winter of 1777-1778 at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. In 1781, the Articles of Confederation were written and adopted in Philadelphia, and Philadelphia continued to serve as the capital of the fledgling nation until the Pennsylvania Mutiny of 1783. Notable Pennsylvanians who supported the revolution include Benjamin Franklin, John Dickinson, Robert Morris, Anthony Wayne, James Wilson, and Thomas Mifflin. However, Pennsylvania was also home to numerous loyalists, including Joseph Galloway, William Allen, and the Doan Outlaws. After elections in May 1776 returned Old Guard Assemblyman to office. The Second Continental Congress encouraged Pennsylvania to call delegates together to discuss a new form of governance. Delegates met in June in Philadelphia, where events soon overtook Assemblyman's efforts to control the delegates and the outcome of their discussions. On July 8, attendees elected delegates to write a state constitution. A committee was formed with Benjamin Franklin as chair and George Bryan and James Cannon as prominent members. The convention proclaimed a new constitution on September 28, 1776 and called for new elections. Elections in 1776 turned the old assemblyman out of power, but the new constitution lacked a governor or upper legislative house to provide checks against popular movements. It also required test oaths, which kept the opposition from taking office. The constitution called for a unicameral legislature or assembly. Executive authority rested in a supreme executive council whose members were to be appointed by the assembly. In elections during 1776, radicals gained control of the assembly. 
By early 1777, they selected an executive council, and Thomas Wharton, Jr., was named as the president of the council. This constitution was never formally adopted, so government was on an ad hoc basis until a new constitution could be written 14 years later. In 1780, Pennsylvania passed a law that provided for the gradual abolition of slavery making Pennsylvania the first state to pass an act to abolish slavery. Children born after that date to slave mothers were considered legally free, but they were bound in indentured servitude to the master of their mother until the age of 28. The last slave was recorded in the state in 1847. Six years after the adoption of the Articles of Confederation, delegates from across the country met again at the Philadelphia Convention to establish a new constitution. Pennsylvania ratified the U.S. Constitution on December 12, 1787, and was the second state to do so after Delaware. The Constitution took effect after 11 states had ratified the document in 1788 and George Washington was inaugurated as the first President of the United States on March 4, 1789. After the passage of the Residence Act, Philadelphia again served as the capital of the nation from 1790 to 1800. Before the capital was permanently moved to Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania ratified a new state constitution in 1790. The constitution replaced the executive council with a governor and a bicameral legislature.